That's the technical talk about the inner source. So I expect that you have some technical background, but if no, uh, so I also try to lower the barrier as I can. So um, at least uh, in the end, uh, you will find the list of practices and tools that you can uh, reuse in your project, in your inner search product, or you can um, you can help the teams as an inner source uh, uh, team, uh, help the others to adopt these tools. Uh, and uh, you can send the link to this video to your engineers and they will uh, find the insights about that. So let's start. I would like to start, start my conversation with the phrase from Google that's uh, when they wanted to discover if there are uh, any common factors among its best performing teams. They started uh, research and tried to find uh, what made uh, Google Teams effective. They expected to find a combination of individual traits and skills that would be key ingredients of high performing teams. But um, instead, what they found that who is uh, in a team matters less than how the team members interact, structure their work and view their contributions. And that's uh, the technical point of this will be topic of this uh, today's discussion. So my name is Dmitry. I'm originally Java developer, but now I focus more on the practical part of that. I'm helping the teams to build a collaborational style, uh, especially in terms of engineering practices and engineering maturity of the teams. And uh, I will focus more today on the technical, as I said. Uh, let's look at the typical inner source collaboration. So usually when the first team uh, needs some feature, then uh, this team came to the second and uh, second are not able to deliver it in time. And what they <clears throat> saying that uh, they are asking uh, the contribution uh, would you like to make a contribution to the second team? And after some time, the first team uh, brings the code, second team pushed, uh, pushing the big green button merge pull request, and that's it. That's the practical part of the inner source. Thank you for watching. Uh, of course, I'm joking. And uh, in my previous experience, I don't know about your experience, but you may face this situation when the first team uh, hears that uh, somebody asked them to send the contribution and uh, they have set of questions. And uh, this one of the uh, popular, the most popular question about uh, the absence of transparency of the, in the project. It's uh, really difficult to send the contribution to change anything in the external code. And the same set of question for the second party um, they also usually not uh, understand why they need it and why it's uh, happening right that because uh, this code was created by the externals and a lot of questions uh, they had. And in the end, we have the situation when uh, both teams saying that your in source not working. And uh, welcome to the talk about tools and practices that will make your inner source collaboration works. So usually on the conferences, on the summits, we are focusing more on the cultural and organizational aspect of the inner source. But this talk will focus more on the technical and operational part. Um, and today we will talk about three uh, first topic about architecture, about approach called everything as code and about automation. Let's start from the first one. So uh, when we are uh, saying that uh, our architecture should be modular, modular you should support, uh, um, support that process when you have some models, uh, you can replace them if you want, some core models and uh, what, what kind of architecture? Of course, this is architecture is uh, called microservices when you have small pieces of your system and uh, complexity um, divided by these small pieces. Some backends, some parts of your system can be common, some 
uh, inner source contributors or teams who use this particular system in the inner source mode can they own uh, custom backends uh, for their custom needs. And in the end, you have microservices architecture. And afterwards, so your system is complex and uh, you have business processes that's, they, that that's, uh, will require some calls to the multiple uh, system. You need to orchestrate these calls. You need to orchestrate this process. You can use uh, BPMN solutions like uh, Kamunda, Zigbee, or your personal choice, but uh, I'm sure that you need this kind of orchestrator. Uh, your system uh, also should be integrated with some external systems and adapter approach uh, can help you to solve this problem because uh, some uh, environments have the same have one system other require uh, environments uh, have another systems and you need to adapt your system and uh, integrate to the system uh, in the same time to the multiple uh, external uh, sources and uh, here you can reuse the adapter approach. Uh, the same uh, thing for the front end. Some of the teams uh, want to have web application, some of them mobile application, but um, <clears throat> and also there is the case, for example, when uh, once uh, have uh, one design system and others uh, want to have uh, their colors and the buttons uh, will be, should be look differently and use another de de design system and uh, since we have this modularity in mind so we can uh, reuse the approach and uh, create bring the micro front-end approach when your uh, single application can be common but blocks inside this uh, can be custom and you can create uh, the block aspect for the special need for the concrete uh, team and in the world, when we have on one side uh, micro frontends and multiple frontends, on the other side we have multiple backends, we need uh, some layer that will uh, connect these uh, items. And that layer can be a uh, backend for frontend uh, layer, and this you know, can, kind of popular approach nowadays, especially in the, in the world, in the architecture like that. Or you can provide the GraphQL API and uh, make the API uh, flexible enough to um, to make this uh, integration between front end and between uh, multiple backends so that's the typical architecture uh, in my point of view and i am sure that you have your own perfect uh, architectural view in your head and uh, let's discuss it later i think it will be great to share knowledge about that and let's go to the second topic second topic everything is code so since you have complex architecture uh, with the multiple modules, uh, models and uh, you, you should uh, provide information what uh, how it looks like and usually we are using the c4 model if you are not familiar with that you can check the website afterwards and uh, it's kind of popular and uh, one of the default architectural representation models and we can uh, reuse the everything as code approach here and uh, use the architecture as code approach. So we are creating the files file uh, in the plant UML standard, uh, expressing what we have uh, in, in inside inside the system, expressing the modules what we have, and afterwards rendering automatically to the to this nice picture. And in the end, what we have that's it's easier to us to maintain the. Uh, architecture and uh, if something some component will be created in the future so it's easy to us to change the picture the same approach for the documentation and it's great if you have your documentation as close as possible to your code and if you so my personal choice is uh, storing the documentation in the asti doc right in the repository with the microservice and then this uh, documentation rendered uh, to the beautiful view, for example, using the standard GitHub uh, uh, renderers and afterwards you're able to consume that. Uh, the same for the activity diagrams. Uh, again, you have the file stored somewhere in the Git and uh, this file expressing what is happening inside your um, business process activity diagram and then it's easy to you to change if your code is changed so you're also changing this file and uh, your picture will be auto automatically regenerated 
The same approach for the contracts. So uh, you have modular architecture and these modules connected between each other through the APIs and you should express these API contracts. You can express uh, using the default um, uh, way of expressing that, uh, for example, open API standard, uh, store this open API file somewhere in the Git again, and uh, you can do anything what you want with this file. So for example, you can provide the simple, uh, simple UI with the Swagger, or you can generate some code from this contract. Uh, so this is the field uh, where you can boost the productivity and uh, externals and especially when you have um, a, a good amount of contributors uh, will will take will tell to you uh, thank you because they are able to integrate with your system as easy uh, as fast as possible because before you will code the system you you already will have the contract and that's the api first approach that you can reuse in your project so especially in the world when we are living in a situation when you have a shared code base for all inner source contributors or shared docker images that they can reuse and deploy in their environment and a different separate deployment per business unit per inner source contributor user and so on and it will be great if you will store this infrastructure um, structure uh, sorry for this uh, so if you store the files that express your infrastructure again somewhere in the git and it will be easier to you to replicate the deployment for to, to uh, and onboard a new inner source uh, contributor and provide them information how you are actually deploying that and using that that was all for the second part uh, this is the everything as code approach Let's start uh, to the, let's go to the third part, automation. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you uh, should know that automation is the key right now, and uh, uh, it's almost impossible to live in the modern world without automation. And as an enabler for, for that uh, uh, is the choice, right choice of the strategy in the Git. So my personal uh, choice here is GitHub flow uh, because it's much easier rather than other flows in Git. But uh, this is the choice that team should be, should make and express to externals that we are using GitHub flow. If you want to create some new feature, so create the feature branch. Uh, usually we are feature branches have this particular name and then uh, what you need to do in order to merge it to the main branch. And in this kind of branching uh, strategy, it's uh, important to keep the main uh, branch uh, clear and to keep the feature branch uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to so the feature branches should be a short lived branches and in order to be able to do that so you can reuse the approach feature flex when you're merging the feature as early as possible and you're merging that into disabled mode and when then you are enabling that when you need that so enabling this feature code review is vital especially when we are working with the external contributors and uh, what can help here in terms of automation and code review is the set of flinters check tests and uh, quality gates that you have to pass before your code is being merged to the main branch and uh, that's increasingly boosts the speed of the collaboration so since you have code feature branches uh, you can create the feature stand and uh, deploy the set of microservices with databases with uh, other uh, technical stuff needed for the system to be working um and this feature called dynamic feature stands and uh, your inner source contributors will be able to click manually and check that everything works well uh, and so they will be calm afterwards when you are merging this change to the main branch uh, 
And in order to able to do that, so uh, you should uh, ensure that your infrastructure is smart enough. So that set of uh, tools, it's my personal choice, but again, you can use any tool that uh, you want, but you can ensure first that your infrastructure is smart enough and uh, infrastructure allows you to build the uh, flexible delivery pipeline with feature branches, with feature dynamic stands, uh, with templating, with uh, different styles of uh, deployments uh, and strategies. And uh, in the end, it will be great to use the, uh, if you will go to the second uh, topic, to the, today's topic. So um, it will be great if you will store everything again in the Git. Uh, you can reuse the approach GitOps here, for example, and Argo CD that's help you to do build this uh, kind of process and uh, express to externals, external contributors, um, to your team also what is happening in uh, in the delivery pipeline and it will be clear to them what will be happen after after they will send the commit to the git so that's all for the first two parts um, parts about the technical aspects of the inner source contribution but we also not um, talked about the uh, many uh, kind of topics, for example, tools that help the teams uh, externals to onboard, uh, about transparency management and uh, backload management and uh, about their transparency. Uh, so it's uh, important to keep a convention and to agreements and the tools and practices that help you to support that. Uh, site reliability engineering seems uh, that it's highly important, especially when you're working with external uh, contributors. Libraries and SDKs that you're using and providing, uh, testing, it's also a good point to talk. Uh, dependency management, observability and metrics, and so that's the set of questions that you need to uh, answer if you're working with external contributors. What I want to say now that modern software is complex enough and it's not possible to focus only on the cultural and organizational part. You as an inner source team uh, can provide to the teams some solutions, some practices, some um, technical and operational tools that will help them to build this uh, collaboration and uh, to, 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 to make them happier in the end. And uh, you as a um, team who are working with the uh, external contributors also should care about that because uh, it's, uh, it's important to externals, it's important to you, it's important to the inner source success. So uh, who is on the team matters less than how the team members interact, structure their work and view their contributors. My name is Dmitry Sugrobov and let's build the solutions and engineering flows when the working with the external contributors as easy as pushing this big green button. Thank you for watching and let's start the discussion about tools and practices that you found useful for the successful inner source collaboration.